What's up YouTube, I'm Josh, and this is Beard Meets Flavor. Today we got something special for you. I'm gonna do a reverse seared, smoked, bone-in tomahawk ribeye, and then we're gonna pair that with some scalloped or au gratin potatoes. Uh, I'm gonna dazzle the uh, au gratin potatoes a little bit by adding some mushrooms, some shallots, and then a few different types of uh, really cool cheese, and maybe even throw in some diced ham in there for a little extra something something. Um, so here we got some smoked mozzarella, we got some Monterey Jack because it's a real nice melting smooth cheese, and then of course some cheddar because who doesn't like cheddar. Uh, seasonings are real simple today. We're going to use basically salt and pepper, and that's it. And then because I wouldn't feel right if we didn't have some sort of greens, we got some broccoli rob here just to uh, make sure we get our healthy stuff in. So stick around, I think you guys are going to love it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, because the steak is obviously gonna take the longest because it's a thick boy, uh, we're gonna get this seasoned and on the smoker so we can start working with the rest of the stuff. Um, I kind of let the steak sit out and rest a little bit because it's, it is thick. I want the uh, frost of the fridge and everything to come off of it. So I let it sit for about 30 minutes while we were kind of setting up. I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit of olive oil on here just to, to uh, kind of help the seasonings stick. And then uh, we'll get it seasoned up and going. So. I'm just going to put a sparing amount of olive oil. I don't want a ton of olive oil. And then uh, just rub it down. Give a nice little machage. Flip it over. Do the same thing. Probably could have taken off the ring for this. Get a napkin. And then we'll season. Then you kind of want to make sure, because it is a thick steak, you can go ahead and season pretty liberally. Get uh, all sides. Let's get this wax paper off here. Okay. And now I'm going to jack up this pepper. And same thing. Um, it's a thick steak, so use lots of pepper, lots of salt. Kind of pat it in. See if I can get this guy to stand up for me just like that. Okay, we'll go ahead and do this side. Pepper shaker is going to need a little bath afterwards. Okay, um, I got the smoker fired up at 250 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in there. When we come back, we'll start uh, getting everything put together for the potatoes au gratin. We'll see you then. All right, so I went ahead. Uh, we had some technical difficulties with the little ones, so uh, camera woman had to go take care of that. So I went ahead and chopped up. Uh, the mushrooms, I basically got a batch of uh, sliced baby bella mushrooms, and then I kind of diced them up a little bit. Uh, you can see it's not like super small. I do want a little bit of, you know, I do want to taste them and, and, you know, catch one when I'm eating uh, the potatoes. Uh, mushrooms, they will cook down a lot. So um, I know it looks like a lot of mushrooms, but I think it'll be cool. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start dicing up. Uh, these are shallots. And uh, so we'll get these bad boys out of the husk. Um, shallots uh, are basically, they're in the, the onion family. Um, they've got real good oniony flavor. Um, they're just a little bit smaller. I like them because uh, I'm going to put them in the sauce for the, the potatoes. Um, and you can see it's obviously much finer than uh, like your regular onion. So we'll kind of get that so that we get a nice uh, fine dice in there. Because I do want the onion flavor, um, but I don't want a bunch of chunks.
right, so I'm gonna do this other guy here. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the potatoes peeled so we can get those things sliced up and uh, we'll come back for you. All right, so uh, we got the potatoes peeled. I feel like everybody kind of knows how to work potato peeler. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna get most of the skin off. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of slice it into coins or chips or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can use a mandolin for this. Uh, I don't have one yet, so we're just going to dice them. And you want to keep them as uniform as possible. So we're kind of looking about like that. Pretty simple. Uh, so we're going to cut up all the potatoes, get our slices ready, then we're going to make our sauce, and then we're going to kind of layer everything into this cast iron skillet uh, that I've got greased with butter, and then uh, we'll throw it into a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes, and uh, we'll put something together for you. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and saute off these, uh, these mushrooms. I got a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of butter, uh, cause butter is good flavor. You get these, yeah, it's gonna be a ton of mushrooms, but whatever, we'll cook them off. Um, I'm also gonna add some salt and pepper. The salt's gonna help bring out, it's gonna help take out some of the moisture uh, from the mushrooms and help them kind of reduce. And some pepper. Okay. And uh, so from here, we're just gonna kind of let those sweat down, cook off, and then we can kind of layer it into um, the pan with the potatoes and the sauce that we're gonna make here in just a sec. So uh, we'll come back. Uh, like I said. Okay, so now we're gonna start building the cheese sauce basically for uh, the potatoes. Um, we'll start with the, like three tablespoons of butter. Might be a little more than three tablespoons. But so we're gonna get that in there. Melt that butter down. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a roux. So this cheese sauce is actually, I mean, very similar to a cheese sauce you'd make for, you know, basically anything else. So we're gonna make a roux, which is basically equal parts fat and flour. Um, first thing before I add in my flour, I'm gonna take my, take about half the shallots and then uh, cook those down a little bit just till they're translucent. And then I'm also gonna add in uh, about a tablespoon of our garlic paste. And man, if you could smell this, this is what it's all about. The house smells absolutely amazing right now. So go ahead and cook this down. Uh, as you can see, I mean, it doesn't take a ton. Those onions are super fine. So fine. So that's about where I want to be. I'm going to go ahead and get some flour. Probably could have got this out beforehand, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, all right, so I'm just gonna take the flour, get some on the stove. Just adding about three tablespoons of flour in there. And it's just all purpose flour, nothing fancy. No big deal. Now we just blow it all over, make it real messy. And then I'm going to cook this down. And you kind of want to cook it. Roux's a little thick, a lot thick, but we can fix that with a little, uh, we'll put the milk in. Uh, but you just kind of want to 
flop it everywhere, spread it around a little bit. Um, you want to kind of cook it for a few minutes till the uh, till the raw flour taste comes out. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start adding in um, adding in our milk. I've just got whole milk. Uh, you can use cream, you can use any of that stuff. Um, it's a pretty rich dish to begin with, so I chose whole milk instead of like a, uh, you know, a cream or whatever. So we're going to put that in a little bit at a time because you want to make sure you really break down the flour. And uh, so I mean, you can kind of see already, um, you know, the flour is mostly gone. Uh, you just have basically onions and you can see it's pretty thick. So in this case, it looks like I added uh, too much flour to the, the butter. So we'll just keep adding in milk. This is gonna be enough cheese sauce to make the uh, potatoes and a plate of nachos, I think so. That's kind of the consistency that you want to start with. So you can kind of cut down the, the, flour, uh, uh, the flour to the butter ratio. And then we'll start adding in the cheese. The cheese obviously is gonna start thickening it up. I got everything kind of grated down. Uh, the cheddar, the Monterey Jack, and the mozzarella. And same thing, you're gonna kind of just add this in a little bit at a time and stir and that cheese will kind of start to melt and you'll see the sauce start to thicken up so um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish adding in the cheese and uh, bring you back once we kind of come together a little bit and show you what the sauce looks like okay so we got the sauce kind of where we want it you can see we're you know not quite ribbons but uh, it definitely coats the back of a spoon so it's kind of at a nappe level, so it, it coats the back of a spoon. A spoon coats the back of a, a spoon doesn't really kind of close. Um, you got to remember this is going to continue to cook when we put it in with the potatoes. So this is going to be perfect. And uh, I'll go ahead and bring this over to the table. We'll start building and get this thing going. Okay, so here we go. We got the uh, cheese sauce made. We got the mushroom sauteed potato slice. We're going to go ahead and uh, start putting this together. So first thing we're going to do, uh, shout out to uh, Grandma and Papa for hooking up the uh, non-slip pad for the uh, for the cutting board. So we're going to start with just a thin layer of the uh, cheese sauce. Just want to kind of coat the bottom. Okay, and then we're gonna layer our potatoes. So start on the outside and just kind of go all the way around. Uh, you don't want to stack them up too thick, but you do want them to overlap a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna do this uh, you guys kind of get the picture. I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. Uh, we'll get this bottom layer done, and then uh, we'll show you the next the next step. We'll be right back. Okay, so we uh, did the first layer, so you can kind of see what we're going for. Uh, I don't know. It just kind of looks like a weird potato flour. Uh, and then kind of like you're making a lasagna almost. And then we're going to put the sauce on top of the potatoes and same thing smear around the sauce and you want to get it nice and covered so you get all your potatoes coated uh, we're gonna add in my wife just told me to make sure everything I had 
make sure I had everything I need. Uh, so I'm gonna just sprinkle in some of these mushrooms. We got, uh, you know, it's, it's kids and dogs. Somebody's always doing something around here. All right, uh, so same thing. We're gonna go ahead and uh, keep doing this layer after layer. We'll probably get through about three layers, get kind of to the top, and then uh, we'll top it with a little bit of the cheese that we used in the sauce, and we'll get it in the, uh, in the pan, or in the oven, I guess. So uh, here we go. Okay, so we got everything prepped. We're gonna go ahead and top it with some cheese because, you know, gotta have that nice bubbly cheesy crust. So I'm just using the same cheese uh, that I put inside the sauce. So uh, as always, guys, if you've stuck around this long, if you don't mind uh, liking, and liking and subscribing, ring the bell for notifications, uh, really helps us out, helps the channel grow helps me grow as a cook and uh, you know we can make some more stuff together so this is about finished and you'll notice with this I didn't use like salt and stuff like that because cheese is pretty salty to begin with so you don't want to over salt it um, so, so very simple basically just use a little bit of pepper uh, and the rest of the salt and everything kind of came from the cheese itself so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven We'll cook for about uh, 35, 45 minutes uh, to check it if it's done. Basically, you're just going to hit it with a fork like you would if you're making uh, mashed potatoes or something like that. You want the fork to go in with no resistance, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we'll go ahead and check on the steak and see where we're at. For the steak, we're going for a medium rare, uh, which is about 145 degrees. Because we're going to reverse sear it, I'm going to take the steak out at about 125, 130 degrees because it's a little bit thicker steak. Then we'll go ahead and get that seared. I'm also going to make a, uh, a, a little bit of a basting sauce for the steak when it's done. Uh, just basically a little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic, and a little bit of rosemary. Give it a nice uh, finishing touch. So uh, we'll come back and we'll get that squared away. All right, so we got the steak finished up and you can kind of see it's picked up a lot of smoke flavor. Looks excellent. I'm gonna check the temperature. Oops. Uh, so right in the middle, we're about 100 and 130 degrees. Um, so the Pit Boss has like a, a grill feature. Um, so you kind of slide the thing over and it lets the fire come through so you can actually sear directly on here. So now that we've got it smoked, we're gonna go ahead and sear it off. So you see it's got nice heat. And it's gonna get that uh, that flame, that charcoal flavor on top as well. So we're gonna go about a minute and a half on each side, two minutes just to kind of bring it up to that 145 mid-rare temperature. Then I'm gonna pull it off, let it cool for about 15 minutes just so all the juices can kind of get back into the meat. So you, uh, when we're done, we're gonna have a perfectly cooked medium rare, super juicy, delicious steak. So uh, give us a few minutes, we'll show what it looks like. Okay, so uh, we're gonna make kind of a little pan sauce to kind of put over the steak. Uh, uh, so we got the steak rested for about 15 minutes. Uh, we've got the juice from the steak. I'm gonna put all that in there. Cause that's where the flavor's at. Uh, I'm gonna take, I don't know, because we don't need a ton. Probably a tablespoon and a half of butter. Just put that in there. That'll kind of help thicken, emulsify, add a little extra flavor. Bring that up to temperature. This pan is, uh, this pot's a little small. Um, 
Then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some rosemary. God, this stuff uh, smells absolutely amazing. So I'm going to take the rosemary, and I'm not really going to chop it. I'm just going to kind of break it up, pull off some leaves, break it up, and then put it into the sauce. And then just a touch of the probably, I don't know, half a tablespoon of um, the garlic. And so you just have to kind of a simple little sauce that after, after we're done, uh, we're going to go ahead and just kind of sprinkle over the steak when it's all finished. So uh, we're going to just kind of roll over uh, here in a sec. We'll show you the steak. We'll get that cut up. We'll bring out the potatoes, put the whole thing together, and finally we'll get to taste this stuff. Okay. Now this is the moment we've all been waiting for. I may need to turn that backwards for this one. All right. So the bone's a little hot, so I got this weird little, I don't know, Pac-Man shit. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the bone. want to get real caveman you can just wreck into that but I mean look how nicely that's cooked good smoke mm. excellent not feeling super caveman -y today so then we're just gonna kind of cut uh, you can see I, I kind of chose this specific one because you can kind of see right here it's got that big fat spinalis muscle which is that part of a ribeye that's like just super super tender so um, here and I'm just going to kind of cut This is mostly fat back here, but we'll go ahead and chunk off that piece. We can figure it out. But basically, this is kind of what I want to show you all. Look at how perfect that's cooked. Perfect medium rare, and it's just, I mean, you can see the super, super juicy. I'm not going to wait until we get plated. I'm gonna slide these bad boys over here and uh, I'm just gonna take a cut, take a bite. Look at that. I mean, that's, you can see the juice in there. It's perfect. Let's give it a taste. Well, sorry. Let's let the beard meet the flavor, right? You know, There is few things better than like a perfectly cooked steak. The smoke is not too much. It's just a nice hint of smoke. The salt is really kind of accentuating the flavor of the meat. It is super, super tender and it's just cooked perfectly. So this is a home run. And to be honest, it's super easy to make. I mean, if you have a smoker, throw it on the smoker, let it get to temperature, sear it off, rest it, eat it. That's all you need to do. Super, super simple. Okay, so here we go, the finished product. We've got our perfectly cooked, reverse seared, smoked tomahawk ribeye, our potatoes au gratin. And uh, I said broccoli rob earlier, but it's actually just broccolini. Um, so like baby broccoli, but it's, it's fancy. It's good. So, uh, we already kind of gave you a taste test of the steak. So let's, uh, let's dive into the, uh, potatoes are grotting and my mouth is watering to really talk. All right, so we've got the cheese on top. It's, it's going to be really damn hot. 
Mm. It's hot, but the potatoes are perfectly tender. We cooked it for about 45 minutes. Cheese has got that nice kind of almost, um, you know, that baked cheese kind of flavor. Got some kind of crispy edges. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm gonna try the steak again, but I'm gonna try that spinalis muscle. Uh, we drizzled it with our rosemary pan sauce. That's just rosemary, butter, and then the pan drippings from the steaks. Uh, but, I mean, look at that. Absolutely perfect. Let's give that a go. That's killer. I'm telling you, make this at home. It is something, a labor of love, if you will, because it does take a little bit of time to prep. It does take a lot of time or, you know, decent amount of time to cook. But once in a while thing, obviously it's a little rich, but a once in a while thing, this is absolutely amazing. You're going to love it. Your family's going to love it. We love it. So I believe you will too. So if you stuck around this far, again, do me a favor, like, subscribe, help us grow and uh, leave some comments uh, down below if you guys uh, you know have any ideas of things you'd like me to try and cook or if you've tried some of our recipes let us know uh, what your family thought we'd love uh, love the feedback so and you know if you guys think I did something wrong let me know like I said uh, I'm a self-taught cook so uh, feedback is good I'd love to uh, love to learn more so I'll stop talking. I'm going to finish eating this stuff. We'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.